The comments tell me I should never use carbon fiber filament for electronics projects because it conducts electricity. Does it though? That seems like something we can test. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video showing a banana jack adapter for my electronic load. And as usual, I got a lot of comments telling me about everything that I did wrong. I actually don't mind that. I learn a lot from the comments on my videos. This time, several people told me that the carbon fiber filament I used for the covers conducts electricity. Some people were certain it would short circuit and others were concerned that it might affect the circuit in some way that they couldn't quite articulate. Now I've personally never had a problem with it, but it's pretty easy to test, so let's find out. We should probably first talk about what conductivity is. Conductivity is the ratio of the current density that flows in a material to the electric field that causes that flow, and it's the inverse of resistivity. But we don't usually talk about resistivity, which is a material property. We talk about resistance, which is a property of a whole finished component. The relationship we care about here, of course, is Ohm's law. If we have a circuit with a power source, like a battery, and a simple resistive load, there are three values in play. The voltage being applied to the load in volts, the resistance of the load in ohms, and the current flowing through the load in amps. We can write the relationship between these as V equals I times R, and we can rearrange this equation so if we know any of the two of these, like I and V, we can calculate the third. R or the resistance. If the component in question is a 3D printed part, the resistance of that part will determine the amount of current that flows through it for a given voltage, and if we intend to use that part as an insulator, we want the resistance to be as high as possible, hence we want as little current to flow as possible. Since carbon fiber itself does conduct electricity, it stands to reason that a 3D printed plastic part that has carbon fiber in it might conduct enough to cause a problem, either minor misbehavior or total catastrophe. So what we need to do is make some parts out of carbon fiber filament and test their resistance. How do we do that? With an ohmmeter. If we take our circuit from before and add a meter to it to measure the current, then we can substitute different resistances, and since we know the voltage we're applying and how much current is flowing, we can calculate the resistance, and this is essentially how an ohmmeter works. If I take this multimeter and probe a component, it supplies a known voltage, measures how much current flows through the probes, does the math, and displays the resistance. There are two challenges with this. First, all multimeters have a minimum current and hence a maximum resistance they can measure. If we care about testing insulators, we need to be able to measure much higher resistances than what a typical multimeter can detect. And second, some materials behave differently at high voltages, so we need a multimeter that can supply those high voltages. Fortunately, there are tools designed to solve both of these problems. This is a surface resistance meter. It's designed to measure very high resistances in sheet materials, specifically materials that are slightly conductive to dissipate static electricity. And this is an insulation resistance tester. It can supply up to 1,000 volts to test that machines, tools, and appliances have proper insulation to protect the user. The surface resistance meter has these two brass contacts on the back and it's designed to be set on a surface to measure the resistance of it. Now this is a melamine surface, it's a plastic coating over wood and it is an insulator. In fact, this meter is not measuring anything at all on this surface. If we bring in something that we know is conductive like this big slug of copper and set the meter on that, you can see we're reading 10K ohms or 10 to the three ohms. That's really the minimum resolution that this thing can read. It's really designed for measuring high resistances and it only reads out in orders of magnitude. So it doesn't really have much resolution at low resistance values. This is what it was really designed for. This is an anti-static bag and you can see it's measuring 10 to the nine ohms or one giga ohm of resistance. And you can see it's categorized it as static dissipative. And this conducts not enough electricity to be useful for anything, but enough to make sure that static electricity will not build up on the surface and become a hazard to electronics. Just as a sanity check, I've got a one mega ohm resistor here, and if I set the contacts across that, we are indeed measuring 10 to the sixth, or one mega ohm. Aside from just doing a sanity check, this is not what this meter was designed to do, but it is interesting to see that it works. 
Now if I clip a couple of leads onto the contacts here and connect this to another meter, we can read the voltage that this is outputting as a part of the resistance test. Runs on a nine volt battery, so it's unsurprising to see that it's outputting a little less than nine volts. In fact, you can see it's reading 10 mega ohms, which is the input impedance of the Bryman BM235 here that I'm measuring it with. So the meters are telling us something about each other. Now, eight or nine volts of output voltage tells us something about the resistance of the material, but it doesn't tell us if it'll break down at higher voltages. And that's what the insulation resistance tester is for. Now, not only can this output up to a thousand volts, it can also measure higher resistances than you can with an ordinary meter. I have a couple of resistors that I borrowed from a friend just for this test. One of these is 100 mega ohms and the other one is one gig ohm. And let's see what the Bryman does with these. So this is a one mega ohm resistor that we know is well within its range. And you can see it's reading about one mega ohm. Let's try this though with a 100 mega ohm resistor. Now I'm trying not to touch the ceramic because these are high voltage resistors and I don't want to put skin oil on them and cause an electrical breakdown along the surface. And you can see the meter's not reading anything from that. We can try the one gig ohm. And again, that just looks like an open circuit. The Bryman just cannot measure resistances this large. But we can try this with the insulation resistance tester and see what it can do. We'll set it to 100 volts, put in the probes, clip in the 100 mega ohm resistor. I'm going to set this aside so I'm not touching it. Hit the test button, and we're reading 99 mega ohms. So that's pretty close. That's at 106 volts. Let's take that one out and put in the 1 gig ohm resistor. And again, set this where it won't touch me. And we're reading greater than 110 megs because it can't measure that at 100 volts. Switch it up to 250, and there it is. 1,005 mega ohms at 268 volts. 500 volts. We get a similar reading. And if we switch it up to 1,000 volts, we see our same approximately 1 gig ohm. So this can measure up to five and a half gig ohms. Let's take another meter here and verify the actual voltage that it's outputting. Start down at 100, turn it on, and we see nothing. Oh, it's because I have it set to AC. Let's set it to DC. It's nice to know there's no ripple, but there it is, 106 volts of output. And you can see it's reading the same 10 mega ohm input impedance of the other meter. There's 268 volts on the 250 volt setting. There's a little over 500 volts and on the thousand volt range, 1060. It says it's outputting 1059, so that is close enough for me. And I'm curious how fast the voltage drops when we turn it off. And it looks like it just takes a couple of seconds to drop to safe levels. So it should be safe to touch the probes a couple of seconds after turning it off. I raided my filament pantry and pulled out every carbon fiber filled filament I have. And yes, I do have a filament pantry. If you had a dozen hungry 3D printers to feed, you would have one too. First up, but in no particular order, is 3DX Tech's CarbonX Pet GCF. They say this has less than 20% carbon fiber fill. We've also got from 3DX Tech CarbonX Carbon Fiber ABS. And this one they say has 10% carbon fiber by weight. Next up is the first Bamboo Lab offering. This is their PA high temperature carbon fiber. All they say about this is that it has 12 to 20% carbon fiber fill. We've also got the Bamboo PLA carbon fiber. This is five to 10% carbon fiber. And we've got that in black. And we also have that in burgundy. This is the only non-black carbon fiber filament that I have here today. Next up, we've got the Chidi Tech carbon fiber reinforced PA-12. This is a 15% carbon fill material. And we also have the Chidi Tech PET CF, which is PET with 15% carbon fiber reinforcement. We also have the Prusament PA-11 carbon fiber black. Now Prusa does not advertise how much carbon fiber is in this. They use recycled carbon fiber sources, I believe. So I don't know exactly why they don't specify, but they don't. And last up, we've got the Matter Hackers and Nylon X. And the Nylon X has 20% carbon fiber fill by weight. 
Now, of course, the filament form of this is not very convenient for testing, so we need to go fabricate some parts. To maximize our chances of detecting what conductivity might be there, I've got a couple of different test parts. The first is a block that has holes in it for four millimeter banana plugs, for heat set threaded inserts, and for self-tapping screws. And the second part is a sheet that should be suitable for testing with the sheet resistance tester. I'm printing these on a bunch of different printers in parallel. We've got the Chidi X Plus 3, we've got the Prusa Mark 3, and the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And I'm just trying to get all of these parts hammered out as quickly as I can. I got all the parts printed and there are definitely some quality and texture differences that shouldn't matter for this test. In particular, the PLA off of the Bamboo Lab is probably the cleanest of all of them, which is not too surprising. Also, these PLA sheets are much flatter than some of the others that are a little bit more potato chippy. Uh, the other reason that I think these are like this is because the default settings on the Chidi are four layers per millimeter, so the top and bottom layers are at 90 degrees to each other, whereas there are five layers per millimeter in the default settings for the PLA on the bamboo, so the top and bottom layers are, are filled in the same direction, plus the PLA doesn't shrink as much. For the blocks, I made all of the holes a little bit undersized, and I did that for a couple of reasons. One is just so that I could drill them out and know that they were all the same size and I didn't have to tune all the filaments on all the printers. But the other reason is the drill cuts through the surface of the plastic and maximizes the chances that we'll make contact with the fibers inside. Now the small hole should be the right size for a four millimeter banana plug and that is a nice tight fit. So I think that's gonna be a good test. Put in the heat set inserts, I am going to use a press. This is the one that Naomi Wu sells, and I've been pretty happy with it. It's not cheap, but it does a really nice job. It is temperature controlled, but there's a fair bit of mass there that probably wasn't anticipated when they designed the soldering iron electronics that she repurposed into this, so it takes a little bit for it to come up to temperature, but once it does, it works really well. Now I'm applying a little bit of hand pressure on this and I can actually feel the inserts cutting through the plastic and scraping on the carbon fiber. And the other problem that I ran into doing this is all of these materials have radically different melting temperatures. So I started from the coolest ones and just ramped up the temperature of the press as I went. Let's start with the surface resistance tests first and we'll do this in no particular order, starting with the Chidi PET CF. And we're reading no conductivity on that. The Bamboo Lab PLA CF in black. No conductivity. We've got the Burgundy Bamboo Lab PLA carbon fiber. No conductivity on that either. We are making contact with both of the electrodes. We're just not reading anything. Got the Matter Hackers Nylon X. Again, no conductivity, no reading at all. The Carbon X PET GCF, no reading. We've got the Carbon X ABS CF, also no reading. The Prusa PA11 carbon fiber, no reading. The Bamboo PA high temperature carbon fiber, no reading from that either. And the Chidi PA12 carbon fiber, and no reading at all. Let's bring out the one meg resistor and just make sure everything is working properly. And sure enough, it is. This meter can read up to 10 to the 12th ohms or one tera ohm, and it's just not reading anything from any of these samples. So they have no appreciable surface conductivity at all. For the block testing, we'll start with the banana plugs just because that is the easiest test. We'll hook up the high voltage resistance tester and just press the jacks into the block. This is the Carbon X ABS CF material. And we'll start out at 100 volts. And that's reading greater than 110 megs, so no conductivity at 250 volts. Showing greater than 5.5 gig at 500 volts. Again, no conductivity. And at a thousand volts. 
Still no conductivity. At 1,059 volts, this is still an insulator. Next up is the Bamboo Lab PLA CF. And we're seeing nothing there. This is the Burgundy Bamboo Lab PLA CF. Nothing. The Bamboo Lab PA High Temperature CF. Nothing. And this is the Prusa PA11 carbon fiber. And uh, that's not nothing. That's conducting. Is that 120K ohms at 180 volts? Let's turn this down to 100 volts. And it's conducting even at 100 volts. Okay, that's a surprise. I did not expect that at all. I've not seen any conductivity from any 3D printed material before. So that was a surprise. Let's try the Cheaty Pet CF. Nothing on that. The Matter Hackers Nylon X. Nothing there. The Cheaty PA12 carbon fiber. Nothing there. And the Carbon X Pet G CF. And nothing there. So now I'm curious if we can read this with uh, BM-235. Let's switch our jacks around and see if we can read anything here. And no, I'm not reading anything, so it must just have to do with the voltage. Wow. That's crazy. Now I'm wondering about the surface meter. Let's hook up some jacks to that. I know you're not supposed to use it this way, but let's see if it can measure anything. And it does. One mega ohm. I mean, again, we're just looking at order of magnitude here, but this is actually reading something at 8 volts. Wow, I, I did not expect that any of this stuff to conduct at all. Now I'm curious what the output voltage is on the BM-235 here. And now it's reading something. It's not stable. That is really interesting. I wonder if we're just wearing into the plastic by putting the jacks in and out so many times and it's becoming more and more conductive. That is really curious. I never saw this coming at all. Let's check and see what the output voltage is on this meter. Bring in yet another meter and we'll set that to DC volts and see what the output is. And that's interesting. That's really low. I think that would vary based on the range. And yeah, it does. So there's like 1.6 volts, 1.7.1. And we're reading the one mega ohm input impedance on the fluke. That's really interesting. So that's really low voltage, but now it's able to read something. Interesting. I went through and installed screws in all the blocks. I've got self-tapping screws and I've got metric M5 screws into the heat set threaded inserts. We'll start with the Carbon X PET G CF. We've got no conductivity of a thousand volts on the self-tappers and on the heat set threaded inserts. Also no conductivity. Next up is the Matter Hackers Nylon X. No conductivity on the self-tappers or on the inserts. Bamboo Lab PHT carbon fiber, nothing on the self-tappers. But the threaded inserts are conducting. That's a second one. So the Bamboo Lab PHT carbon fiber can conduct and the Prusament PA11 carbon fiber. We've got conductivity on both of those. Wow. The surprises keep coming. Let's finish this out. The Cheaty PA12 carbon fiber has no conductivity, nor does the Bamboo Lab PLA carbon fiber in black or burgundy. Here's the Prusament PA11 carbon fiber, and yeah, that's conducting on the self-tappers and on the threaded inserts. We expected that. The Cheaty Pet CF, nothing and the Carbon X ABS CF, nothing.
Of course, this is the part that started the whole conversation. This is the banana jack adapter for my electronic load. And I'm not going to test it on the load for obvious reasons, but I've got some M6 screws through the PCB and I've got the actual nuts from the electronic load on here to try to mimic the conditions it would be in in use as closely as possible. So let's test it. We can feed through those screws on the back or through the banana jacks. They're all connected, so it's all the same thing. I'll just plug into the banana jacks because it's easy. And we will start the testing at 100 volts. Never mind, let's go right to 1,000. And nothing. No conductivity. Now, we do know that the material I used here, which is the Bamboo Lab PA high temperature carbon fiber, can conduct under the right circumstances. We just proved that. Now, in this particular case, you know, it's not in intimate contact. We're not cutting into the plastic. It's just surface to surface, and it's not showing any conductivity, but... We now know that the commenters on that video were right. You learn something new every day. Since we now know that this stuff will conduct, I thought, well, let's see if we can start a fire. This is the highest voltage power supply that I have. This is a 1200 watt supply. It goes up to 60 volts and can supply up to 20 amps. And I've got it connected to one of the conductive blocks here with jumpers between the self tappers and the threaded inserts just to maximize the current flow. But even at the maximum 61 volts on this supply, I just could not get anything to flow and I could not get any fire at all, which I have to say was really disappointing. I went back and did the math with the actual resistance across these blocks and really, even at 60 volts, we would only be seeing like half a milliamp or maybe three milliwatts of dissipated energy, which is kind of disappointing. The fire was never going to happen under those conditions, and that's really too bad. It would take much higher voltages. Even mains voltage probably would not be enough. So disappointment. If you're just here for the results, well, here they are. We tested nine different filaments from several different brands across four different test cases. Surface resistance, banana jacks plugged directly into holes in the plastic, threads cut into the plastic with self-tapping screws and heat set threaded inserts, and we found two filaments that showed conductivity. The Bamboo Lab PAHT carbon fiber showed conductivity through the heat set threaded inserts, and the Prusa PA11 carbon fiber showed conductivity through the banana jacks, the self-tapping threads, and the heat set inserts. Now, could the other filaments show conductivity if we repeated the test or had slightly different conditions? Maybe, but those are the only two where we actually detected anything. I would not take that as proof that the other ones are safe to use around electricity. My summary of this entire endeavor would be that it is possible for carbon fiber filaments to conduct electricity, so you should be cautious about using them in situations where that might matter. That was not at all what I expected, and that's why we test. Carbon fiber itself is conductive, so it does make sense, but I thought there wouldn't be enough of it in the plastic matrix, and I thought there would be enough plastic surrounding each individual fiber to make it essentially an insulator. And to be fair, at low voltages it is, or maybe a better way to put it is, so far I've gotten away with it. But as we saw today, there are absolutely cases where it's conductive and where it could be a big problem. I learned something new today. As always, the 3D models are available on Patreon. I have no idea why you would want them, but if you do, they're there. And if you're already a patron, thank you. Your support makes it possible for me to do this. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.